Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. All right, welcome back to the show. We've got a great guest for you today. We've got Rose Fan, and she's a successful entrepreneur, public speaker, and author. And she has an incredible story. She came from Vietnam in 1976 as a boat refugee. And she earned her MBA from UCLA and had become an award-winning entrepreneur and self-made multimillionaire while being the president and owner of several companies. But she's now the CEO of Bella View Network, an online e-commerce with a twist of giving back. Welcome to the show, Rose. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So we're excited about what you got going on, and let's just get right into it. Tell us a little bit about your business and who you're helping. Actually, the focus is in Bellevue Water, and I discover the solution for better health uh, with this technology of the filter is through the technology called um, ionic micron t- uh, f- absorption filtration. And basically, it's, uh, I, I believe that it's uh, my calling, finally, to really deliver my uh, intention to help the world, starting with a small group of people, but from my humanitarian trip, I realized that I had the clean water in my hand from the bottle that has the filter while people are suffering from, you know, um, water contamination and had a lot of diseases. That's, that was when it triggered me that everybody in this world needs to have better health and simply with clean, alkaline water. Nice read your story and I've seen you speak at Harvard and West Point and you've got an incredible backstory, but tell us what led you to this field and how you got started. Well, when I, if we want to talk about when I came to this country empty-handed as a boat refugee, I always ask myself, why was I allowed to survive to live? Under the circumstance, I should be dead. I could be dead, but I was alive. So with miracles that brought me to this country, the country of, the, uh, of opportunities, I always have in my mind with gratitude, I always want to help, help. But then from the beginning, I was just a helpless one person. Through life, I grew with a lot of people's help, with uh, God's help, and uh, learning, knowing people, and uh, from doing business um, and struggles and all of that, I was very fortunate to uh, make uh, the, one of the companies um, by winning a huge contract with the government through EDS company when I was in the manufacturer of uh, computer upgrade boards. And that was uh, uh, many of my husband invented that. So with the strategies, we really got that really big in a very short time. So through life, you know, I uh, experienced businesses and since I came here looking back, I have always been an entrepreneur without realizing it. Coming to present, Actually, last few years, I could have said that, you know, I was retired, but that's never the, really the case. I am always active in doing things to help society in different church activities and all of that. My going to a humanitarian trip uh, in Vietnam with a group called Heart of Charity, it really hit me when... I saw places, but I imagine, I mean, you cannot imagine they still exist with people that suffer, poor people, lacking very basic conditions. But worse than that, you know, a lot of diseases 
birth defects, you know, handicapped people, disabled people, and mainly all because of the water contamination from the world and from the earth, from the chemicals. And so that's why uh, it really just, you know, um, emphasized to me that I have a solution in my hand that needs to be shared and to be educated and the world needs to know and I can at least do some good for everyone that you know didn't know but should know so that's that's my passion how I come to water solution awesome. well thanks for sharing that with us that's a great mission along the way I know there were several people that inspired you but is there one person that you can think of that inspired you along the way? One person? <laughs> yeah, or if you got a couple, that's fine too. Oh wow! Uh, you know, when I uh, when I was uh, on that trip, that you know, uh, going to give people food and all of that, I met a couple priests that were doctors. Doctors, okay, they actually could lead a very wealthy life in California, but they actually sacrificed their lives to serve the poor people, the lepers, you know, in Vietnam. And it will really touch me that we were, by seeing their sacrifice, it really inspired me that the world still has a lot of good people and they are the quiet people, the silent people, those are the leaders that really need help. They never ask for help. And when I saw that, I really felt like these leaders who sacrifice their lives for other people need to be helped because those are the people that won't say, help me, but they, because they're busy helping other people, other poor people, helpless people. But somehow, I could empathize that I need to help these leaders so they can continue to help more people. Instead of me helping one person or a group of people, I, my mission is I need to concentrate and we're continuing helping them so they can bring hope and bring, you know, access to orphans that have education for better life, better future. The sick people have, you know, means to uh, get some help. And so I was aiming at the key leaders who are already doing this work that I was not uh, even aware of when I witnessed that. It really burned me, in me, the fire, the fire of that, I need to continue helping as much as possible and aiming at these leaders so the fire can spread out more and more with love and cover more ground than just, you know, uh, uh, one person. So I say the couple priests that I met there really burned, you know, kept my flame even stronger. So that's why when I came back, I changed my origin, original title, The Phoenix Rose, to The Fire of Hope. And that was the reason why the title of the book became The Fire of Hope, is I want to spread the hope to, to people, you know, including the silent people that, that have the heart and the fire to, to help other people. Awesome. Great story. So in your travels and in your, in your experience, obviously you identified the problem. Why do you yes. think that people are having, you know, so much problems with, with clean water? I mean, here we are, you know, it's in the year 2016, and there's people in the world that are still don't have clean potable water. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not too much of a surprise. Let's say I talk about the third world countries, including Vietnam and some others, um, because the war before, they had uh, spray from, you know, the planes that spray Agent Orange, which was like DDT as a, as, as a toxic um, 
and it seeped down through the ground for years. And and people got the water from the well from the ground, and they didn't know, they didn't realize, especially people up in the mountains, they got all contaminated. And then the companies, the factories from other countries that went over there, and they they dump uh, chemicals like you heard the news of Formosa kill all the sea creatures and the whole you know cities and towns and uh, provinces you know die I mean are unemployed because most of them in certain areas are fishermen and and it cause a lot of diseases because of that but. That is shouldn't be a surprise because you know of the conditions there. But can you imagine in U.S. here, and um, the news has bombarded, you know, um, and brought to our attention at least 23 states, to say the least, in U.S., including Flint, Michigan, has been poisoned with lead and other chemicals because the old pipes, you know, and it caused a lot of problems. And even though U.S., we know and we assume that we have the best water, the cleanest water, still there is problem with water. And uh, either people deny it or people are not aware, but we need to wake up and prevent diseases versus, you know, curing them. So as much as we will protect our health and our the health of our loved one and everyone as a human beings, we need to be aware of that because our body, you know, um, contains 85% of water. Without water, we'll die. But with bad water, we'll be sick. So either way, the main objective is to face reality and find a solution to protect our health. And with the filter, that can remove 99.9% of virus and bacteria and either out on the street, on the go, or in the family with the tap water that you not sure whether the chlorine, you know, the, the government puts in the chlorine to disinfect by the time it gets to our tap water. To disinfect, the, the chlorine is really bad for our system. It hardens our arteries. And if the if the houses have reverses osmosis system, they would it would take everything out, all the minerals from the water out, and then so it turn out that you only drink um, distilled water. So it's just water, but that's really not healthy water. So all of, of that, we need to educate ourselves to know what is the solution. The solution that removes contaminants and and um, you know virus bacteria if it's outside in in but within the inside the house or the faucets and things like that. If you can have all that bad stuff, the contaminants removed, but still give you enhanced natural alkaline, that is even better for our health because natural alkaline will neutralize the acidity in our body. And where the body is, uh, you know, has acidity, a high level of acidity, that's where the cancer tissues grow. So how important is our health? We need to really determine that and take action to really take care of our health with healthy water. Wow. I know I'm, when I travel, I'm very concerned about the, the water, but I should be deeply concerned as well within the United States. I mean, it's still, I don't drink tap water now. I mean, we, and then you have the bottled water and that's even another problem, right? Yes, because the government doesn't regulate that. And uh, the water bottle out there is, you know, in, you know, it's a billion dollar market out there. And not to knock out anybody, their intention is to really help, you know, to give clean water. But, Certain water bottles, you know, if you really do test, you know, you'd be surprised. The quality is not there, as they say. So it's pretty scary. So it's, you, each one of us needs to really have the control 
of the water that we put into our body at the point of use. So when I travel, I always bring my bottle with a filter, and I don't have to buy any bottle of water. First of all, at the airport, it's expensive. Um, secondly, some places, you can't even find bottle of water if you need to. But if I have this bottle in my hand, I can put in any water, actually. E- even river, you know, or... or um, yeah, uh, pond or lake or it squeezes out instantly clean water and alkaline water for me and that was really precious to me and you know I just imagine that he say in California the, the, uh, there's a tendency that we'll have earthquake it's an earthquake state so imagine if a disaster happens Every person at least should have that filter because whether you get water and you may have the whole swimming pool where you can't drink that chlorine swimming pool water. With my filter of Bellevue water, you can just take the water from there and it squeeze out instantly clean water. And that's the beauty of it. So just imagine that if you're know, just in driving your car and something disaster happen, you have the bottle in your car at least, you know, for survival, that may save you. You don't know what can happen. And uh, you may, you know, uh, not die because of uh, uh, having no food, but you will die if you don't really have good water or clean water. Yeah, that's awesome. So you can even... I know in the Philippines, they capture a lot of rainwater to use for different things. So you can even use rainwater, right? You know, rainwater is a misconception because of the, the earth has, has it, it, it's considered acid rain now. So it's not really a, a clean rainwater like a you know, long time ago when there's no chemicals that they vapor up to the air and goes around back to the ground and go up to the clouds and you know so it's not even guaranteed that rainwater is something that you know you think it's clean or you believe it's clean anymore and Time Magazine has put out you know major articles for years how people are sick and and hurt because of the acid rain that you know we people normal people all of us may not be aware of but, you know, major articles from major articles, I mean, uh, from, uh, you know, um, Time magazine, it says the poisoning of America and that front page. And Newsweek, are we running out of water? Los Angeles Times, millions drink contaminated water, health service report. The San Diego Union water here fails 81 safety rules in test. The Salt Lake Tribune, Billions are wasted in projects to clean up U.S. water. We are not aware of all of this, right? So, but it's there. It's there. It's a whole history of all this water contamination, and people either they deny or they ignore, the, or they are not just not aware. Of. It, it's a fact of life. We need to wake up to really realize what we're doing here. Awesome. So, tell us about how. Or tell us about a project that you've done where you've impacted the local community or helped someone. Yeah, yeah. Recently, uh, actually, uh, a week ago, and before that, we have uh, been supporting this uh, uh, musical program. It includes the young, disabled, talented musicians. Okay, most of them were sponsored by this uh, group called Pearl of Heart. They help uh, select it and they found these talented disabled young people, uh, you know, either blind or um, um, no arms, no hands, no legs or crippled. But mm-hmm. amazingly, they put a show and uh, they brought these uh, people f- from Vietnam over here and they perform a musical show that every song, every sound of the um, music, I, you know, I never experienced some, anything like this that brought tears to my eyes in every word, every note of it, every movement, every scene, every number of that performance really touched my heart. 
and I, I, I just felt really, um, I mean, extremely touched. First of all, I could see that these clipboard people, they are forgotten over there, have a chance to have hope, to have hope to find their, their dignity as a human even they're not perfect physically, but their heart is so, so beautiful, okay? And this show, they not just only perform to touch your heart, but they uh, commemorate the, you know, brothers uh, of uh, supporters uh, as musicians as they were, that contributed uh, into the musical world, musical world, but also, the main uh, way, the reason of that performance is to raise um, awareness to ask people, you know, to uh, help, you know, for the fundraising to help the flood victims in Vietnam. Now, all over, the flood was horrible. I mean, mm-hmm. if you could see the scenes, the people were just like you know, devastated. So I was part of it, and I took the initiative. And they allow me to go on stage. I told them Bellevue Water is donating, you know, uh, about, you know, $15,000 worth of bottled water, okay, to the flood victims. But the main thing is not, not that I'm doing that. It matters anything. But the point is to ask people to join in to the mission. Everybody will join some you know, participate, and our goal was, let's say, if we could, you know, um, uh, each person or how many people that have the heart to care for um, victims, and by tipping in, we tried to reach a goal of, of sending 10,000 bottles, and that, at least, we can show the unity and the strength of and the power of unity, and people who care, who are fortunate to live here in the U.S. without the floods at the moment, but to really still care for the people that they are helpless. And some of the organizations, you know, they they automatically say, okay, they would provide food, you know, like rice and instant noodle, but they didn't know there's a solution for good water or filter like mine because mm. the, if even they deliver water, a bottle of water there after the person finished, it's done. It's gone. But with this bottle of, and with the filter that I show to the, the, the audience from stage, I say, with this filter, you can put the flood water in this bottle and it filters out, you know, all the virus and bacteria and contaminants and give you instant clean water for at least six months. Imagine that. Imagine wow. that. Say if the helicopter is, you know, dropping some, uh, you know, uh, provisions with water, they have to drop cases of heavy water bottles. But then each bottle is done after you finish it. But with this, can help them survive even with the flood condition water. They just, you know, uh, filter the flood water into clean water. Simple as that. And people were amazed, and so people really, uh, you know, very eager to participate. And here, the one person gave uh, $500, you know, another person $2,500. And my plan with them was that, okay, I proposed to them the, the lightest, smallest bottle, but it's, you know, more, most convenient for this mission. And the retail price was only 25 but instead, Instead of, you know, $25, I told him, I say, I would like to support 50% of anybody giving the money to this Pearl of Heart group to help the disabled. If Pearl of Heart wishes to keep that 50%, and 50% would go at the bottle to be sent to the flood victims. And that's what, you know, I did uh, recently. And people, you know, are really, you know, participating. And, and this show, they could see that my heart is really sincere. So they offer to go everywhere that they perform. They will talk about water. 
and so it just like without me you know imagining and but from the sincere heart they could see this is good for right. people people here people there and them as you know the, the talented um, disabled musicians it's really amazing to see you know how physically crippled but you know we all are aware that we are all disabled somehow inside that maybe people don't see or we don't see but we are imperfect one way or another but these crippled disabled people they have a pure heart okay a pearl of heart and 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 i'm so happy that if a little bit of anything i can do to give them hope that they can have a, a better life and like one of the blind you know uh, persons that were so talented that i happened to be sponsored to stay and i had a job and playing music at disneyland how amazing that was you know right. so i think there's always hope for something better if we care enough to really take action. So, you know, there's a lot of filters out there. What's the difference between yours and the others? Oh, what yeah. Makes- yeah. Okay. Thank you for asking that. Um, when some people say, oh, yeah, I heard about the filter. Oh, for example, Kengen from Japan. And, they, you know, the rich people say, you know, I bought that system that I have to uh, um Blocking electricity to give me alkaline cost me four thousand, five thousand dollars. You know, I say, oh wow, good for you. But do you think everybody can afford five, four thousand, five thousand dollars? And that's good. I'm glad that they, you know, uh, appreciate, you know, health and better health. But here, that anything that produce alkaline you have to you know to be electrolyzed that means you have to plug in electricity the alkaline product through that means doesn't last okay for so between two maximum to seven hours you know the alkaline disappears with our filter which is um, ionic micron absorption filtration it's very very tight so the alkaline that after it removes the contaminants, it will give you a natural enhanced alkaline that um, after tested, you know, it lasts more than 90 days out without, you know, um, like uh, the one that's being electrolyzed. So that's number one. Number two is that we have the portable one. We have the pictures for family use. And I also have the new invention and just patented that is meant to be um, given or introduced to any country that whatever containers they have they have been using as a water um, system all they need to do is to plug in our filter with the invented adapter it would make any kind of container become a water filtration for alkaline and that is the most brilliant design that that you know my husband and my son have invented so that is a new project that i am going to work to also introduce to um, you know all the countries that need you know uh water uh, filtration, simple one, but very powerful one. And all we need to do is just to, to, to sell them the, that filter with the adapter. And they awesome. can make their, you know, um, existing style or, or size, or whatever shape that they already have, and just convert it into a super powerful made in USA filter from Bellamy right. Water. Yeah. So people are probably wondering how they can get a hold of some of these products. What uh, what do you recommend yeah. that they do? They should go into um, Bella V Water website. It's uh, spelled B E L L A. That means beautiful. V V I E is life. Bella V Water dot com. And they go in there. They will check on to where to buy. And they go into B V N Wellness site to buy and order. Nice. So we'll have that in the notes section so they can click on it. So mm-hmm. 
very awesome story. I'm a, I'm a big fan, and uh, I'm happy with what you're doing. And um, so thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you very much, Tracy, for your uh, caring for the better health uh, you know, to the world. <laughs> Absolutely. And I understand you got a new book coming out here pretty shortly. Just give us a brief uh, description of what they can expect in your new book. Yeah, the book is called The Fire of Hope. From Victim to Victor. Um, I've been asked to write my book since I came to this country in 1976 after my first, uh, first English uh, teacher, comp- English composition teacher. She wrote on my two pages uh, paper and she said, write your book. Yeah. And not until now that finally I am going to have that book published, including tips and um, lessons of my uh, life, uh, survival with the miracles, um, what's up and down, and how we can overcome all the challenges in uh, business or family or parenting or individual, uh, how to really never ever give up to really you know, hold on to the fire of hope because there's always hope and there's always miracle. So hold on to it and you'll see amazing things will happen. And that's what I'm trying to do to inspire people to, to, you know, believe that there is a solution to everything. Awesome. And we're very excited to help you bring that to the marketplace. So thank you very much. So there you have it for this edition of the show. We'll see you the next time. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.